What happens when you build a nice 408 Stroker Windsor and then add boost? What happens when you run too small of a turbo and try to turn up the boost? What happens when you add the right size turbo? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and as always, welcome to the channel. Today it's all about turbo 408 351 Windsor based small block forwards. In fact, we got two turbos, but just not at the same time. We're actually comparing the effect of what happens when you put too small of a turbo on a combination and you're trying to turn up the boost. What actually happens? I'm going to show you. The boost will go up, but not through the whole RPM range. But then we put a bigger turbo on it that's able to support the desired combination of boost and power. Good things happen. Interested? Let's check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. It's time for some boost on a 408 small block forward. And actually, this thing worked out pretty well. And as always, along the way, we got to do some very, very cool testing. So let's take a look first at our NA combination, because as we know, the boosted output is a direct function of the NA output you know, plus the boost, basically. The boost is, acts as a multiplier. So this was a 408 stroker, meaning we started off with a 351 Windsor. This particular one was a hydraulic roller block because we were gonna use a hydraulic roller. And in this case, we actually used a solid roller camshaft, so we could have used the earlier block too. But I like using the hydraulic roller stuff because typically we'll run a hydraulic roller camshaft in these. So it was a uh, stock 351 block. We put a stroker crank in it from SCAT. In fact, the whole combination, I think, came from SCAT. So it was a forged four-inch stroker crank, a set of H-beam forged rods. They were forged dish pistons when combined with our airflow research heads. This compression was 9.4, 9.5 to 1. So, you know, low compression for the boost. <laughs> But again, we started off with a 408 stroker. So when you, when you have extra displacement, obviously you can spool the turbo, turbo up better and all. So it works out really good. But we also wanted the 408 to make good naturally aspirated power. So what we did was we installed a pretty good camshaft in it. This one came from Comp. It was an off-the-shelf deal. It was a solid roller. It was an XR286R10, meaning it had 614-621 lift split. A 248, 254 degree duration split. So pretty healthy camshaft as things go. 110 degree lobe separation angle. And yes, that still works with boost. We topped it off with a set of really good cylinder heads because we wanted lots of flow. So Airflow Research 205, 72 cc chambers, full CNC porting, you know, the Airflow Research for a, for a 351 up to 408 kind of thing. An Airflow Research 205, especially since we're running boost on it. Really, really good combination for that allowed us to make lots of power on this combination we topped this off with uh, an Edelbrock Victor Jr. This one actually was the Ford Motorsport version, but Edelbrock did that for them. We put a 950 HP carburetor. It had 1.6 crane roller rockers on it. It had a Mylodon oil pan and pickup. And this combination also had a DSS a girdle and windage tray to help strengthen the bottom end. Although the 351s tend to be pretty strong even in stock trim, but we had um, ARP uh, main studs on it and stuff. So it, it was a good piece to begin with. So we ran this thing naturally aspirated and it did pretty well. Run naturally aspirated, this thing produced 579 horsepower at 6100 right up here. And then 548 foot pounds at 5100 RPM. So we're starting off with a, a pretty good combination, making decent power. And I like starting off with a good NA combination because the, once we add boost, we, <laughs> this combination works out pretty well. And the first thing we did, obviously, we did add boost to this. And we started off, I'm going to go ahead and move myself over here, maybe out of the way. Maybe right in the middle here. <laughs> so this is no man's land between the NA power output and the boosted output. And what we did was first we added a, a single turbo combination. The turbo kit itself came from HP Performance. Inch and three-quarter headers feeding into a Y pipe and then a T4 turbo mount. In this instance, and I'm going to show you a couple of different turbos that we ran. We started off with, initially we had run some whole set turbos from the guys from HP Performance. But I'm going to show you the results of testing that we did with two comp turbos. One was a smaller 74 millimeter, and that's what, what, that's what we see here. Because I'm going to do a comparison. I'm going to kind of show you what happens 
when we change turbo sizing, what happens with boost response and stuff. Because on this particular combination, on the 74 millimeter turbo, we had raised the boost, but what we saw is only a gain down low and it kept making kind of the same peak power because it kept making the same boost there. Now we're using a manual wastegate controller for this, but what we were doing, I think is running out of turbo on the 74 millimeter turbo. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute what happened when we step up to an 80 millimeter turbo, then we could kind of make some real power. But run with this 74 millimeter turbo, we saw 11.9 uh, pounds of boost out here at the power peak, 981 horsepower. And then the peak torque at 5,100 was 939 foot pounds, but down there it was making 13.2 foot pounds or 13.2 PSI. So I'm going to show you the boost curves and we'll be able to take a look at this. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we stepped up to an 80 millimeter turbo from our 74. Okay, guys, now we can see what happens when we step up in turbo sizing. But before we do that, I forgot to mention that when we added our HP turbo kit, we're trying these different turbos. One of the things that we did, we had to change, obviously, our induction system. Now, we kept the Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake manifold from Ford Racing, but we did add a blow-through carb bonnet, like enclosure, from Vortec slash Paxton. And then we also added an 850 Mighty Demon carburetor. The, the carburetor was not a blow-through carburetor but it didn't have to be because it was enclosed inside this carbon enclosure and so basically it was working the way that it normally does. All we had to do was adjust the jetting and get this thing to have the air fuel that we wanted, which basically was between 11 and 11 and a half to one. And we were able to do that with just jetting and it worked out fairly well. So now let's find out what happened when we changed turbo sizing. And this is our smaller comp turbo, the 74 millimeter single turbo kit from HP Performance running through the air to air intercooler and then into the card bonnet. So we kind of had double cooling going on here, but this is an interesting test. So this thing with our 74 millimeter turbo was making 983 horsepower and 939 foot pounds of torque. And the boost varied from about 13 pounds out here or down at the bottom to 11 and the reason for that is we wanted this thing to run 11 psi <laughs> but then we tried to raise the boost and the only place the boost would go up is down low because i think we were kind of running out of turbo on the 74 millimeter turbo and you guys let me know in the comments if you think that this is accurate because i'm going to show you what happened here's what happened when we put an 80 millimeter turbo on there and again remember we're using a manual wastegate controller here so that's very important Here's what happened when we put an 80 millimeter turbo on it. So it essentially made less power and we're gonna get into why. But the big reason is because now we could actually control the boost and this thing was making around 11 pounds at the peak, but it was also making 11 pounds everywhere else. And I'm gonna show you what happens when we turned it up because unlike the smaller turbo, where when we turned it up, it only adds power down low, this one's going to add power everywhere because essentially we had enough turbo to increase the boost and have the same amount of boost everywhere all the way through the curve and make lots more power because the 80 millimeter turbo will actually support the extra flow and power. So run with the 80 millimeter turbo at basically between 11 and 11 and a half pounds. It made 971 horsepower and 880 foot pounds of torque at the horsepower peak, 11.1 for the big turbo, 11.9 for the smaller turbo, and here's the big thing at the torque peak, again, 11.5 pounds for the big turbo and 13.2 for the small turbo. So it was making more torque down low on the small turbo. But hey, Richard, what happens when we turn up the big turbo? I'm going to show you exactly that right now. Here's what happened when we ran about 13 pounds on the big turbo. Voila! <laughs> it made, it, it matched basically the low speed power of the smaller turbo because now it's making about the same amount of boost, but was able to carry the boost all the way out. So it made about 13 pounds. It made 13.1 uh, uh, PSI at the horsepower peak and 13.6 uh, at the torque peak. So uh, the peak numbers checked in at 1,036 on the horsepower and 957 foot-pounds. So this is an important point. Turbos will not just keep allowing you to turn up the boost, but if you do, what you'll see is where it can, it will supply extra airflow and extra boost down low, like the small turbo on this 408. But 
if you get a, if you get the right size turbo, you can get it there and get it out on the top end where the turbo is able to support the requested boost level and power output. I'm going to show you the boost curves next, so let's check it out. We're taking a look at the power output and now let's check out the associated boost curves with each of these and this is our smaller 74 millimeter comp turbo and you can see the boost curve here this is when we tried to raise the boost from 11 to 11 and a half pounds and what we saw is the boost would go up in the lower part of the rpm range and by low we mean 4,000 to 5,000 or so we could make over 13 pounds of boost 13.3 13.4 pounds of boost but what would happen is the boost would just fall off and fall down below 11 and a half pounds out past 6,000 rpm so the turbo is able to supply the extra air airflow down low but it doesn't have the airflow capacity to continue with that upstairs and you guys can make comments please let me know we were running a manual boost controller I didn't do back pressure readings is this just a function of there being excessive back pressure and opening the gate given the size of the turbo and the fact that we were near a thousand horsepower I honestly think that 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 could be it but I honestly think that we're getting near the flow limit of that 74 millimeter turbo but here's what happened on our 80 millimeter when we're looking for 11 psi or setting our manual controller for 11 psi we kind of get that it goes from 11 down at 4000 up to 11.5 or 11.6 at 4,500, but then hovers between 11 and 11 and a half, ending up at 11.1 .1, out past 6,000 RPM. So naturally, the smaller turbo, because we've, we've raised the boost artificially, basically, is making more power there because it's making more boost, except at the very top. But when we add more boost on our 80 millimeter and command more boost, it does exactly what we expect. I'm gonna go ahead and move myself over here. So when we commanded more boost, it's raised, it started out at 13 and a half, went up to 14, dropped down to just below 13 out here at the power peak. And so you can see the 80 millimeter turbo is able to supply more boost. We do have a slightly falling boost curve, even with a bigger turbo, which leads us to believe that this might be a back pressure issue, although probably less so with the bigger turbo. But obviously boost makes power. But you have to have a big enough turbo to support the amount of boost you want to run based on your naturally aspirated combo. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. 408 small block turbos for the win.